What's up guys, Danielle here at NeutralSupport.net. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about all things ERD, that is effective rim diameter. Maybe tied for the most important measurement you can take when you're trying to calculate your spoke length for a wheel build. Now, I did wanna talk about it because there are some tricky things, some misconceptions, but besides that, I just really wanted an excuse to mess with that monolith tool I was telling you about, the Calip ERD or Calipered, however you say it, it's awesome. A tool that monolith just came out with to just measure ERD in one shot and it is amazing and I love it, but we're gonna run through how to use this, how to use some other tools, compare their results, see if ERD even matters, and why is it even important. Let's go. I'm ready. Just wanna make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. So when we talk about measuring ERD, it's a pretty big assumption that when you measure, you are actually measuring the ERD. You're not, most of the time. Most of the time, you're actually measuring the NSD, the nipple seat diameter. If you look at a spoke with a nipple on it, the nipple seat is where the spoke nipple lip right here sits on the inside of the rim. So the nipple seat diameter is both the distance here on the inside and also accounts for the thickness of the rim. But the nipple seat diameter is not the ERD. So the ERD actually accounts for a small amount of the spoke that is in the head of the spoke nipple. With a normal DT Swiss style spoke nipple like this or similar, it's about a millimeter and a half on each side. So when you measure for ERD, you're actually more likely calculating ERD from an NSD measurement. And that kind of gets people tripped up a little bit because they take a measurement and then they just go with it. Most of the time, you have to do the calculation, but the items on this table would prove otherwise. The three tools represented here for measuring or calculating ERD are making your own tool out of some spokes and some spoke nipples, using the rim rods. These are the Wheelsmith rim rods. Multiple companies, BSD and others, make similar tools, just rim rods, or this awesome caliper that Monolith just made. Of these three tools, the intention is more likely than not that you measure the NSD and then convert it into the ERD for the measurement that you need. Most spoke calculators do use ERD with the exception of some like Sapim, who for some reason expects you to put in the inner diameter of the rim to the edge and then also separately input the width of the actual rim. I don't know why it's important that those two things are separate for them, but it is, and that's how they have you put it in. The sum of those two items would actually just be the NSD, not the ERD, so they may be the only calculator that uses the nipple seat diameter without actually asking you for the ERD. Making your own tool is relatively simple. All you need is a spoke and spoke nipple times two, and you would just make this tool a set length so that when you inserted it in the rim, you knew what each of these was. Now I made this tool, when I made these, I made them 250 and with the intention of measuring the nipple seat diameter. If you wanted to though, you could actually make this and make the measurement with a millimeter and a half of excess so that you could effectively measure the actual ERD with this instead. That would save you a step of adding that three millimeters onto the end, or you can just measure the nipple seat diameter and keep the three millimeters separate. With our three tools here, we're actually going to talk about four measurements because in the world, there are some maniacs out there who believe that the manufacturer will put a number online that is right. That does not account for the fact that there's different tolerance for manufacturer or something might be out of spec. It's always best to measure, but for the sake of a control, we're going to include it in this test. So the head Belgium G 700 C 28 hole rim, the published ERD for that is 593. That is literally the quickest way to get ERD is to just blindly trust the manufacturer. Do I recommend it? I really don't, but some people do. They just trust what's in there. This is published or it's in a database. So if you use like a QBP spoke calculator, you can actually pick the rim. If it's a rim they carry, you can pick the rim in the calculator and they'll put an ERD in for you. To save time, it's, it may not be significant in the build if the rim is off by a couple millimeters, but it is always easier to build a wheel that has an exact measurement and to find manufacturer's defects if there is one before you've already built the entire wheel. We'll start with your own tool. For the sake of consistency, I've actually marked the holes that I'm using on the rim just so that I use the same diameter each time. 
it is good to test multiple spots on a rim when you're actually building because you might have an egg and you wouldn't know it if you only measure in one spot. Likewise, if this rim happens to be an egg or an oval, if I only measure in one spot but I change it, it might skew this test. So all the measurements are happening from the same holes. With these, you insert them from the outside, spoke in through the holes. Once you have them in, you'll notice that there's a gap. That gap is what we need to measure because we already know that each of these is 250 millimeters. And I'm measuring right now, since I didn't account for it in the measurement, I'm measuring for the NSD here, not the actual ERD. So once we get these numbers, we can add the three millimeters. There's that. That is right at 92 millimeters. So the gap here is 92. Each of these is 250, so that's 592. Then we're going to add three millimeters for the actual ERD measurement, so 595. Whew, things are already heating up. When we bring rim rods into the equation, rim rods are essentially a manufactured version of the tool that I made. So they work effectively the same, but you'll notice they're very long. And that is because instead of measuring a gap between them, you're measuring an overlap. So each of these is 350 millimeters instead of just the short spokes. One other difference that you'll see is that rim rods don't use a spoke nipple at all. They use basically a facsimile of a spoke nipple, a machined metal piece that has similar angle and diameter here to act as a spoke nipple when sitting in the rim. So they're close to what a spoke nipple would be, but not exact. And I think that that does skew the measurements a little bit. And you are still only measuring nipple seat diameter. So you add the three millimeters after to account for the difference. The same as what we just did, stick these in the hole with the metal side out. Once you have them seated or what feels like seated, you can hold them together. You don't get any tactile feedback from where it's entering because there is no actual spoke nipple. So you just have to kind of press, and make sure that it's bottomed out. They do come with this clip so that you can clip them together and not have to hold them. So now we're going to measure the overlap, not the gap, and subtract it from 700, which would be the sum of both of these sticks. That is 107 and a half. 107 and a half. 700. 592 and a half. 592 and a half plus three is 595 and a half. You can see that already we're getting a little bit different measurements from what we're doing versus what the internet says. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. So let's check out the caliper. Before we do the measurement, the caliper actually has calibration. So this is a calibration tube right here that you use to make sure that it's measuring correctly. And it's 138.5 millimeters long. You can do two things. You can use this tool to measure the nipple seat diameter by setting it to 138.5 because that's how long this actually is. Or the cool thing that I found is you can actually calibrate this for 141 and a half to get the extra. Or if your spoke in nipple calculation is a little different, you can calibrate this apart from nipple seat diameter. So this tool can actually measure ERD in one shot, no math, as long as you calibrate it correctly. So I actually have it calibrated to 141 and a half so that I can just measure the actual ERD without having to add. So let's do it. With this tool, I actually prefer to set it down on a bench or on the floor because it is a little bit large and that way you can set the rim in so you can move the indicator up. Set the rim in place and put the indicator down on it. So the measurement once you do that is 595. That means that it matches our homemade tool measurement. What does this mean? Three tools, three different results. Two of them the same. Now the caliper and the homemade tool being the same makes sense because they are both using actual spoke nipples to do the measurement. So they should be the same measurement. 
with the caliper actually programmed to measure ERD exactly, you don't have to do the extra math of adding the three millimeters, but you could set it up to just measure the nipple seat diameter just like this tool and the measurements would be exactly the same. The nice thing about making your own or using the caliper is that you can actually use the spoke nipple that you're going to use in the build. That becomes important when you're doing something like building with an Envy spoke nipple or something that has a little bit different measurement that will be on the inside because those sit so differently in the rim that it'll make the measurement different since it is spoke nipple dependent. So with this tool, you would just make another one with the spoke nipples that you were actually using and have multiple. With the caliper, Monolith actually has these prototype indicators that have nipple thread on them. So you could put your own spoke nipple on there and recalibrate the caliper to a different spoke nipple. So that makes it just as versatile as making your own. The rim rods measure a little bit differently because in my opinion, anecdotally, the machine metal piece doesn't sit quite as far into the rim as an actual spoke nipple. It's very close, but it's not quite there. And I think that that is indicated here because it's slightly longer than the other measurements. The internet measurement, as we see, was incredibly off, or incredibly two millimeters off. We're gonna put these into a calculator and see if any of this even matters. For this comparison, I'm actually just gonna use the DT Swiss spoke calculator that I already use. I have a saved build with this actual rim in it. So I'm gonna adjust the ERD for the front wheel to each of these, and we're gonna see what the spoke difference is. And the caliper and the other one are the same. So let's scoot those. With the ERD set at 593 on the front wheel, that would be 284.1 left, 286.2 right. At 595, the left would be 285.1 and 287.2. And at 595.5, it'd be 285.4 and 287.4. So between the lowest and the highest measurement, you've got a little over a millimeter in spoke length. That is actually pretty significant, especially if the spoke length is too short. So a spoke length being a millimeter too long doesn't actually really matter that much. The spoke comes through a little further, but the spoke nipple itself is supported. So like this tool, I just made it this way intentionally so that it got tight. But if the spoke nipple comes through like this, it may not be as big of an issue. If you used to fix all of those Easton wheels where the spokes failed, they built all of their wheels at that time with tons of spokes sticking out of the end like it was what you're supposed to do. It almost seemed like they had to have extra threads to make it possible. I don't understand the logic there. I didn't enjoy working on them, but overshooting the length by a little bit is much less important than undershooting the length. If you have a perfectly set spoke in a spoke nipple, it's flush with the end of the slot. That actually allows the spoke to come through and support the head. So if this was a millimeter too short, the spoke would end just at the bottom of this seat here, which would leave the head completely unsupported and allow the spoke to have leverage. So the stress cycles of the wheel going around and around and around put this to a fatigue point where the head will just snap off. And you'll get customers with failing spoke nipples but perfectly fine spokes. That is a really good indication that their spokes are too short on that wheel and it'll just recur over and over again forever unless you fix it by getting the right spoke length. Having a measurement here actually might have saved us from building a less durable wheel if that spoke did indeed not quite reach all the way to the head of the spoke nipple. The difference here is exactly a millimeter, a little over a millimeter once you get to the rim rods, which I think are overshooting just a tiny bit. Of these measurements, I'd be more inclined to trust a measurement that used the spoke nipple that you're actually building with than the machined end or just the internet because the internet is based on an ideal world this is based in reality, the rim that's actually in front of you. The other fact that two methods measured the same ERD supports the theory that this is going to be the better number and that this is going to be more accurate. In this weird world that we've created where the two most accurate choices are the cheapest and most expensive on the table, why pick one over the other? Ease, time, is your time valuable to you? And that's a real question. So if you're a professional wheel builder, you're building more than 10 wheels a year, get the caliper. It'll save you literal minutes because with the tool that you make yourself and rim rods and a lot of the other tools, it is a multi-step process. So you have to both put it in, measure something, 
subtract or add that from something and also account for the three millimeters or however many millimeters. All that stuff has to be done before you get the number. With the caliper, you just put the rim in the caliper. That's it. One step. Put it in there, get the measurement, move on with your life. You can either measure for the actual ERD if there's enough room to calibrate for your specific spoke nipple, or you can measure for the nipple seat diameter. Either way, you're taking a lot of steps out of it and it's done. You can just build the wheel. And once you multiply that over all the wheels that you're building, especially as a professional where your time is literally counted by dollars, it matters. I spent years with rim rods. I used them a ton. I built a bunch of wheels. I never really enjoyed the process. It just seemed like it was cumbersome. It seemed like there should be an easier way to do it. There are a couple of other things on the market that make it slightly easier than this, but I haven't come across one that makes it as easy as the caliper. So really, if you're serious about wheel building and you want to improve your quality of life, go get the monolith caliper. I'm serious. If you're just building a handful of wheels and you need a way to get a measurement, make your own. Like, just make your own. They seem like they measure a little bit more accurately than rim rods do, and rim rods are in the realm of 60 or 70 bucks. So you can make a $5 tool and you don't have to worry about buying something expensive. Case closed. When the world finds out what you can do, it's gonna change everything. So thank you for watching. Hopefully this demystifies some of ERD for you. Helps you in the future so you can get a good measurement with a few different options, but check out these guys, Monolith. They're doing a great job for wheel building, doing some cool stuff, innovating in a space that doesn't get a lot of innovation lately. So really head over there, website, Instagram, Monolith Tool. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. Try to cover some interesting stuff, topics, tools, whatever. Head over to neutralsupport.net. I've got swag, hats, aprons. Oh, I re-upped the Dropper Buddy inventory so that you can actually buy one again. Thank you for buying all the first ones. That was awesome. Really appreciate the support in any form, so thank you. And as always, I hope you have a good day.